Hello, everyone. I'm Del Hissong, and thank you for joining with us again today for this Facebook devotional that we do every single week. Some of you join with us every single week in places where we travel and sing and preach. You let us know about that, and we appreciate you so very, very much. Can you believe it's Labor Day weekend here in the United States of America? September 5th, 1882 was the first time they celebrated a Labor Day. It was celebrated in New York City. And it was a time when it was set aside to honor those who worked, a time to honor those who'd made a contribution and a difference in this world in which we live. And that's you. You worked. Some of you still work. And you're making a contribution to this nation of ours. And so this weekend is a celebration of you and all that you've done to make this country what it is today. We need workers. We need laborers. In fact, everywhere you go, you see help wanted signs. People are still needed to work here in this country. But you know what? God also needs workers. And in his word, he tells us that we need to be working. We need to be serving him. And so on this Labor Day weekend, I want to encourage you to serve the Lord. It seems that people used to just want to serve God in so many different ways, but it doesn't seem like that's happening as much today. And I can't encourage you enough to serve. There's so many ways that you can work. There's so many ways that you can serve the Lord. There really are. There are things in your church that need to be done. There's a world that needs to be led to Jesus Christ. There's so many things. Just a few weeks ago, my granddaughter, Michaela, she's 14 now. I can't believe it. She said, the motorhome needs to be washed. That's a big motorhome. It's 45 feet long. She said, let me come and wash that. She wanted to work and serve the Lord in that way. And wow, what a difference it made. Psalm 100 and verse 2 says, serve the Lord with gladness. So we shouldn't be working and serving God down in the dumps and, oh, I've got to serve him again, or, oh, I've got to do this. No, serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. That's how we ought to be working for the Lord. That's how we need to be serving the Lord, with gladness. We need to desire to work for God. I'm oftentimes asked, are you going to retire soon? I really don't have a desire to retire. God has called us to the ministry that we do, and I want to continue to do that until until he lets me know otherwise, and he certainly hasn't. I love to sing. I love to preach, and I want to do it with gladness, and I trust you're working and serving the Lord too. So we can honor those who worked in our country and made a contribution, but I think we also ought to honor you who have worked and made a contribution to God's kingdom. It's making a difference. Don't give up. Keep working. Keep serving. Keep living for the Lord. We used to sing a hymn, and it's not in all the hymn books these days, but it's certainly in the older ones, and I used to love to sing it. Let me read the words to you. It says, Work, for the night is coming. Work through the morning hours. Work while the dew is sparkling. Work mid springing flowers. Work when the day grows brighter. Work in the glowing sun. Work for the night is coming when man's work is done. It can't be long, friends, until Jesus Christ returns. Let's work until our work is done. And praise God for those of you who are serving God and working for Him. Let's use this weekend even to honor you and all the contributions that you're making to the kingdom of God. Together, let's make a difference for God. God bless you. Maybe you're watching today, and you aren't a child of God. You can be. You can have your sins washed away. You can have the Lord living in your heart and life. And whether you were to die, or whether the trumpet were to sound and Jesus were to come again, you'd go to heaven for all eternity. And maybe you're looking and watching, and you're saying, you know, that's exactly what I need in my life. And you might be saying, how can I have that? That joy, that peace, the forgiveness of sins, the assurance of eternal life in heaven. Friend, if that's your need, 
why don't you pray right now and receive Christ into your life? And you can just use my words or you can use your own. I'm just going to close my eyes and pray this prayer. And if it's your need, I'd encourage you to just say these words or your own words. Just tell them, say, Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner. Thank you that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart, come into my life, and save me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I believe that he saved you, he's washed your sins away, and you're a child of the king. Why don't you let me know that you made that decision, and I'll rejoice with you in it. I trust that you will go and have a great week in the Lord. God bless you. Did you just accept Christ into your life? If so, we would love to hear from you so we can pray for you. Please email us at info at joyforthejourney.media so we can rejoice and celebrate this life-changing decision that you have made. We would also love to email a link to you with information that will help you start your Christian walk with the Lord. Your exciting journey starts today.